We're gonna have an, an amazing show for you, and tonight we're gonna start with two, two of the very best. Um, the first uh, is, is one of Startup Grind's greatest supporters. He spoke, he's one of the only people that I know of that's spoken to Startup Grind on three different continents. As if he's not busy enough being the CEO and co-founder of Zendesk. Who in here is a Zendesk user or uses Zendesk? We love this product. And as if he's not busy enough, he has a wonderful family, he has four children. Um, and he's also written a brand new, thank you, incredible new book, Startup Land, uh, which we're so thrilled, they're, they're so generous. Uh, we're gonna give away 50, of, or Mikkel is, uh, Mikkel is gonna give away 50 of these books to, uh, to people that quote, uh, quote from his talk or quote from the book, and we're gonna be giving those out uh, through the double doors in the back. So let's give a big startup grind welcome for our first speaker this year, Mikkel Sabane. <laughs> Thank you very much. Whoa, <laughs> that's a little overwhelming, but thank you very much. Uh, thanks for having me here today. Um, my name is uh, Mikkel Svane. It's a foreign name. I'm Danish uh, originally, and I am one of the founders and the CEO of Sendesk. As you know, uh, Sendesk is a customer service platform, and we are excited about having so many customers all over the world, and I know a lot of you guys are customers too. So um, thanks so much for having me here today and helping kick off uh, this uh, fantastic event. Um, this is where I'm from. Or this is the Hans Christian Andersen version of where I'm from. Um, this is Copenhagen on a sunny day. Uh, we have eight sunny days per year. Um, <laughs> And uh, in many ways, it's a fantastic country, but it's not uh, exactly a startup land. This is, uh, this is myself and my two co-founders, Morten and Alex. Uh, we were three 30-year-old uh, free, uh, somethings that had a dream about building a better product for customer service. We were underwhelmed by the state of the industry, and we wanted to build something a lot better. So. Um, <clears throat> We, we worked on the product for a few years. This was taken in the summer of 2009, just before we uh, moved to, uh, to the US and set up shop here in San Francisco. We bootstrapped the company for a couple of years before moving it here. And this is five years later, uh, in May of 2014, when we took the company public on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, that's... Uh, <laughs> That's one of these stories that can only happen here in uh, startup land. Um, I documented this story, uh, seen from the perspective of myself and my two co-founders, as you just heard in this book called Startup Land. Um, and it's, it, like, I, I read a lot of books, I got a lot of advice when I built my startup, and I, you know, it's one of these things you can't really use for anything. Like, it's like other people's advice rarely uh, rally can really, really help you. So, but I thought it would be great fun. I thought it would be maybe a little bit inspirational to share our story. And I don't try to give a lot of great advice in it, but share some of these things that we've been through and just telling it from how these things actually look from the inside because there's a lot of kind of the traditional outside story that you get from TechCrunch and so on. But this is really how things look from the inside and how terrified and, and how little we knew about anything before uh, getting on this journey and, and building Sendesk. Um, but I have a few, um, I have a few lessons <laughs> that I thought I, I would share here today because uh, some of these could be relevant for you guys. So first of all, I want to start with the business plan. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, you know, it's always good constraining yourself to a certain extent and, and trying to work in a somewhat structured way, but I think that one of the most important things when you build your startup is not to limit yourself. There are things you know when you start building your startup, and there's, then there's a bunch of things that you know you don't know. But the real potential is in all the areas that you have no idea that you have no idea about. <laughs> um, if we had limited ourselves to the stuff that we knew, to the state of the industry back then. If we hadn't keep ourselves open for quick iterations and quick little pivots along the way to really cater for the market that we found out there, then we would never have been where we were today. 
Um, there's also an element of, of mentality in that. I'm from a small place in Denmark with like five, six million people in total. Uh, the mentality is smaller, the economy is smaller. Um, but if so, if, it was, if I was a sausage maker <laughs> and set up shop in Denmark, I would think about how could I build for the local market? How could I build for the supermarkets and the shops that I knew? And maybe into the neighboring city, and if I had big aspirations, I would think about, okay, how could I sell to some of the neighboring countries? I think it's, it's fair to say that if you meet a sausage maker in San Francisco, there's no ceiling here, and the sausage maker will think about how can I sell my sausage to the world? And I think it's one of these things that you really learn with Startup Land, when you get into that mentality, when you spend time here in San Francisco and Silicon Valley, that you learn that thinking big is really, really hard. But the, ultimately, that is what makes you uh, want to grow and what ultimately can take you all the way. So <clears throat> remember, it's a big, big world. I don't know if you can see the small red dot up there. Oh, there's no small, but up, like in the middle here, there's a tiny country called Denmark. Um, and if he had only thought about how we could sell for the industries we knew, the markets we knew, we would never have been where we were today. Our first customers were customers in Ireland that did like billing software and uh, or, um, uh, software for telcos. We had a, another, our second customer was a, a chain of gas and convenience stations in Texas. Third company, third customer was a content management company somewhere in New Zealand. All these companies shaped our story and, and, and made us think bigger about the opportunity and the market and, <clears throat> and what we could do with the product. Oh, that's the dot, sorry about that. <laughs> <clears throat> but I must say that even though it's, it's great that, even though it's great to think big and to, to really think about like the whole world is your playground for getting customers, if you are on the path of raising money, it's definitely an advantage also to get some customers here in the Valley and here in uh, San Francisco because then the VCs have somebody they can call and check up on if your product is actually good. Just, just a little insider tip. Anyways, second tip here from my book, remember that users are people too. <clears throat> um, I think that this is one of the things that seems ordinary, but it's one of these things that's easy to forget these days in the, in the in with, you know, when we have all these growth hacking things and so on go on. It's really too, it's sometimes it's too easy to think about your customers and your users as just like numbers in a spreadsheet and how can you, how can you optimize all of that stuff. This, we learned in Sendness, we learned this the hard way. We, we, we rearranged our pricing, our packaging. We thought it was a fantastic idea, but of course, like our customers, the only thing they saw was, oh, suddenly they changed our pricing, we're gonna pay more, and they went nuts. You know, within eight hours, we were on the front page of TechCrunch, um, and all our customers at that point basically revolted. And we had to go out and we have to say, sorry, like we forgot that you know, there were actual people behind the spreadsheet. We forgot that we didn't consult with you, that we didn't treat you better. We had to go out and really apologize in every possible way. And it became kind of a transformational moment for the company. It became very defining for how we thought about our customer relationships. So we also had these t-shirts produced that we're still wearing the day to day. I even get my board to wear them, where we took some of these quotes for some of the most angry customers and wore them around in the office. Yes. Um, finally, a third point here. <laughs> finally, a third point, and that's just, ah, oh, all right. You get it? <laughs> all right. Finally, the uh, last thing I want to leave you with is that, especially when, if you're in the industry of, of building B2B software, is that like even though you're dealing with businesses, remember that businesses are people too. We were in the, in the customer service software industry and, and this was kind of how it looked like in the customer service software industry. It's like, you know, smiling ladies and your, your customers are important for us and all these different things that we know ring so far. So we, we, completely changed, we completely changed how we, how we message to the market and how we try to find a real story a real connections with the actual users of the software. So we also use this completely different imagery. Like we have our fat friend here, and he kind of represents us in a jolly way. 
Um, and he's, that kind of tone has followed us all the way through. So we try to be authentic, we try to be honest and, and um, uh, straightforward about what is customer service and how can it be. And this message, this kind of imagery has followed all the way through, all the way to when we uh, went uh, public on the New York Stock Exchange and we had that big banner up there. So, three little tips. Um, there's not a lot of other good tips in the book, but it's a fun story and I hope you read it. I want to leave you with remembering that uh, there's no really single right way to build a startup. Um, it's, a, it's an intricate, it's a complicated journey um, and you have to define your own path and figure out how you can become successful in your own unique way. Remember, there's a very big chance of failure so remember to enjoy the journey. And with that, I want to say thank you very much and enjoy the program here. Thanks, guys.